In this tutorial, we will take a further look at the Nautilus File Manager and examine the idea of different drives, case sensitivity, and permissions when dealing with file and directories. Now, the, the Nautilus File Manager lists the home directory, the desktop directory, the file system, and the various drives that are found here on the left-hand side of the Nautilus File Manager. Now, if one was to insert a floppy disk into the floppy drive, one could just double click on this and be taken to that directory. As you can see, there is nothing in that particular floppy drive at this time, so it, it does not access that. Uh, but if one was to insert different drives or perhaps a USB stick, those things would appear here in the left hand side as well as under the computer location, again within the Nautilus file manager. Same thing with clicking on the CD ROM drive. If one inserts a CD ROM, double clicking on this on this particular icon will take one to the contents of that drive. And again, USB sticks and, and digital cameras and other things that are connected to the computer that can be accessed as a, as a separate drive will appear in this location. The computer location is a, is a very handy place to go as a starting point to get to your various drives and partitions and to get to the file system and things like that. Now, going back to the home directory for Joe, an important aspect of the uh, Linux file system and, and working with, with files and directories in Linux is the idea of permissions and case sensitivity. In Windows, Windows is often not case sensitive. In other words, files that, that may start with a capital A versus a lowercase a are often regarded as the same file in Windows and in other operating systems. But in Linux is extremely case sensitive. And so a file that begins with a lowercase a versus a file that begins with, a, with an uppercase a are treated as two completely different files. They literally have to have the exact same combination of letters and, and case and numbers to, to equal the same file. Uh, equally as important in Linux is the idea of permissions. Now permissions are extremely restrictive in Linux on purpose because Linux is based on Unix, which is of course a, really a server operating system, which is really designed to be very secure from the get-go. Unlike in Windows, where oftentimes people run as administrator, which is sort of the root user or the super user, which contains all permissions, in Linux that is, is hardly ever done. In fact, it's very discouraged and frowned upon. That is the idea of running as the root user or using your computer as the root user. Instead, the idea is that one should create a regular user, as in this case, Joe, and operate as a regular user because if Joe was to, was to accidentally try to delete the uh, root uh, partition, he would not be able to do so. And that's because everything is tied to a permission of one sort or another. Let's take a look at a directory as an example. Let's create a directory here in uh, the home folder. We will create a new folder uh, called music. And right clicking on this particular directory will bring up this context menu and, inc and will include an entry for properties. Now, one of the tabs here in uh, the properties uh, entry is permissions. And this is where uh, Joe can set the permissions for this particular folder that he's just created, this music folder. Now, there are three groups of users that can have one of three different types of permissions. The first type of user that can be assigned a permission is the owner of the particular item, whether it's a directory or a file. The second group of users is what's called a group. Users can be assigned to groups and users within a particular group can be given similar permissions. And then there are other users. In other words, users that are not the owner and that are not within a particular group are called others. Sometimes it's also called world. Now the three different types of permissions that can be granted are read permissions, write permissions, or execute permissions, or any combination thereof. So as you can see here, Joe has highlighted this folder music, and he has selected under the owner option. So in other words, for, for the owner, the owner has this kind of folder access, create and delete, and this kind of file access. Of course, there are no files in this particular folder at this time. The group has simply access files, and others have access files. Access file would be the equivalent of read permissions. And one can also apply the permissions to the enclosed files. And uh, it, this is also most seen when browsing the file system. 
Now, Joe is not going to have permission to do much in the file system. For example, taking a look at the boot directory, we can see what kind of permissions Joe would have, who is a non-root user or a non-administrator. Joe is just a regular user. Under permissions, we can see that the owner of this file is root. The root user owns this file. That is not Joe. The group root has access to this particular folder, and Joe is not in the root group, and others don't have any kind of uh, permission. Actually, others have access files. As you can see, these are grayed out, and the reason it's grayed out is because since we are not the owner, it says right here, we cannot change these permissions. It's telling us what they are. We can see that the root has create and delete file permissions, root has access permissions under the group, and others have access permissions only. And But we cannot change that. So Joe is able to, to browse this directory, for example, and we can see what's in here. But if Joe were to try to delete something, for example, in fact, it's, it's grayed out automatically. Joe cannot delete. You can see move to trash is not available. And if Joe were to select this and actually hit the delete key, it says here, you cannot move it to the trash because you do not have permissions to change it or its parent folder. Basically, it, it says I do not have permission to delete this file. So those, those permissions, and those will be discussed in another tutorial dealing with the terminal, but those permissions are found on every single item on the Linux system. Every single item, whether it's a directory or a file, has some kind of permissions attached to it. And that, that again, of course, controls who can read the files or directories, who can write to the files or the directories, and who can execute things within the files or directories. And so it's very important to, to make sure that one sets permissions correctly and uh, gets used to the idea of running as a non-privileged user, that is a non-administrator or a non-root user. That is the end of this tutorial.